Good evening, everyone. Uh, alcohol, <laughs> cocktails is probably the reason why I come right in the end. Yeah? Uh, as far as the effect of alcohol is concerned, I think it applies to both uh, a, a very evolved drinker as well as a very amateur drinker, and it definitely has a contagious effect. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is, it is one of those products and I'm very happy to be dealing with it uh, from a different perspective, from behind the bar and uh, it is definitely going to be an interesting 18 minutes for you because I'm just going to give you enough alcohol that does not take you beyond a certain point, okay? Uh, you know, when we talk about alcohol, when we talk about cocktails, and when we talk about bartenders, uh, just like any other industry, or just like any other profession, or just like any other product, it also has a history behind it. And uh, it is so important to understand, to talk a little bit about the past of this beautiful product, because then the future of this product becomes even more spiritual. Okay? Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the past uh, history of cocktails and alcohol in general. Uh, and I'm going to go very quickly with the same. You know, the birth of the cocktail, or what we talk about cocktails these days, it started off very early in the 19th century, okay? Uh, but it wasn't something that uh, came about by somebody trying to invent a drink, or by somebody trying to make something wonderful. It was purely because if you imagine an alcohol, a type of spirit that you probably drank about uh, 200 years ago, it would be very, very crude. It was very difficult to gulp. It would have a very harsh effect. So therefore, the early years of the cocktail were very different. It was very not evolved. It was crude. Therefore, what people were doing were people were just make, mixing their crude alcohol with something interesting, like an orange juice or a pineapple juice, to make it easy on the palate. Okay. But what is interesting is, uh, in the early 20th century, or maybe in towards the later half of the 19th century, cocktail came into record. It, it came into record and people started to recognize certain drinks. Then it started to become a favorite. It got its name, it had a certain amount of history, it had a certain amount of balance, and a certain recipe. Uh, what made it work? You know, it's very interesting because between the 1919 to 1933 in the United States of America, which has always been the big, biggest consumer of all forms of alcohol, went dry. There was prohibition. And during prohibition, there was more consumer, consumption of cocktail. There was more consumption of, elite, uh, you know, bootlegging. There was a lot of alcohol being consumed all across the country. What it gave rise to was a lot of illegal and underground bars. And most of these bars were serving drinks that had to be camouflaged, that could not be served in the form of a drink. So what people were doing, they were generally mixing all their drinks with something that could hide the, the spirit. Okay? That gave rise to the cocktails. And most of the cocktails that we talk about today is purely about the cocktails that came about at that time, uh, and most of the classics were born at that time. In the, in the evolution of cocktails, I'm sure everybody would be aware of this, in the whole evolution of cocktails, I think the martini age or the 60s were very critical, uh, purely because of the vodka martini shaken, not stirred. So the 60s and the 70s saw a very drastic change in the cocktail evolution uh, because James Bond introduced the martini, which was vodka. Until then, it was always gin. And people thought it was very cool to actually go to a bar and say, fix me a martini, shake and not stirred. And even today, when I do cocktail workshops, a lot of people come to me and say, can you fix me a martini, shake and not stirred? Never ever say this to a bartender because a shaken martini is nothing but an alcohol that has more water than alcohol in it. That is a James Bond martini. When you shake a drink, 
you dilute the alcohol okay and james bond was nothing but somebody who was trying to investigate on people uh, the next generation of cocktails came in, came in the 1980s and this was more like the birth of the punk cocktails and that brought in drinks which were very colorful that brought in drinks that were mostly frozen like the frozen daiquiris and the frozen margaritas but what is interesting is that after that particular phase it gave rise to the classics back again uh, you know there's this one interesting movie that came into being in the in the 1980s and it was called cocktails and the main lead actor was uh, tom cruise uh, my company is called cocktails and dreams of course the idea had to come from cocktails and uh, what he did to the whole art of bartending was it brought in a lot of flair it brought in a lot of entertainment to the whole format of bartending uh, you know until then a bartender was somebody who was an old school obroy hotel bartender or a jim khana club bartender this particular thing about cocktails the movie gave a whole rise to the way people perceived the bartender people looked at bartenders even today when somebody uh, comes and talks to me and when i say that i am a bartender the first thing he or she says is do you know how to flip bottles and the sad thing is i do not know how to flip bottles uh, so i'm the i'm i'm a bartender who is a very boring bartender the next generation which is probably the last 10 12 years uh, has actually been a very modern age of bartending or modern age of cocktails because what it has done is i think it has taken cocktails to a completely different level today when people come to bars they do not just talk about uh, a martini or a daiquiri people know exactly what they want and that has brought about a change in the way bartenders look at cocktails it has brought about a change in the way we think when we make cocktails and also in terms of how it works when we actually fix a cocktail and make it a more experiential process for the consumer when they walk into the bar uh, that's not me uh, so today the bartender is all about a person who does not just fix a drink uh, it is about a person who has to have a great amount of knowledge great creativity and then reflect the same in the form of a drink what is critical is he is also somebody who has to have have the right sense of presentation and most importantly he has to be a people's man uh the new age cocktail consumer and the bartender is somebody who is very celebrated you know the consumers like i said have traveled across the globe when you travel across the globe what you come to know is mostly about food and drinks having given this small little short background i'm going to talk about bartending in general cocktails in general and what goes behind making a great cocktail uh prior to this we've had some great speakers who spoke about the different fields you know when we bartenders go behind bars we are a little bit of all of you uh because if i have 20 people sitting across the bar counter somebody could be an engineer somebody could be an army man somebody could be a doctor somebody could be a lawyer somebody could be very depressed and somebody could be there to celebrate a great achievement and we a single human being have to deal with all of them through our drinks through our conversation through our skills uh and of course great presentation so how does a bartender think when he makes a cocktail uh today there are a couple of things you know it's very advanced stage of cocktail making now we do not just think about boring recipes i hate to make a bloody mary i do not know if any uh, most of you who have known what a bloody mary is it is tomato juice vodka and lots of spices and 90% of the people who drink cocktails or alcohol know what a bloody mary is and i hate making it because every time i make a bloody mary and i think that i have made the most delicious bloody mary in the world and i give it to my consumer what they first say is 
that was a good drink, but I think I make a better Bloody Mary than you do. Uh, in our world of bartending, of course, we always say the consumer must be aware of the drink, but it's always nice when the other person does not know what I'm going to make. Uh, so how do we think? The most important thing is, in cocktail making, we use spirit as the base. We do not use wine and beer. We mostly use spirit. And spirit could be from the lighter spirits to the dark spirits. So that there, there are spirits like vodka and there are spirits like whiskey. Vodka is a silent spirit, very easy to fix a drink. Okay? But whiskey is a spirit which has a lot of character. It has a lot of flavor. It is a difficult mix. It has color, it has more character. So it is important to understand the spirit, the base of the alcohol, or so, sorry, the base of the cocktail. The second important thing is to understand the technique of making the drink. So we have to be aware about, should I need to shake this drink? Should I need to stir the drink? Should I need to blend the drink? Because everything is based on the ingredients used. So if I'm using just two ingredients, then I would stick to a process which is much more easy. But when I use different ingredients, maybe five or six ingredients which are complex, is when I would probably choose to use a process which is a little bit more uh, aggressive, like a blending or a shaking. So the technique is also very important. The third important thing is about imagination, how you need to present the drink. And that is when our garnishes, what we put at the end before we present the drink comes into being. So these are critical angles. These are, there's a little bit of creativity, there's a little bit about marketing the drink, there's a little bit about fixing it all together with the technique. But what comes to my mind every time I go behind the bar and where I think every cocktail becomes a success and it becomes contagious in the minds of the consumer is when we get into mindful bartending. The greatest thing that a bartender can do from behind the bar is when you can read human psychology. It does not mean that I know what the next person is going to order. It's purely about understanding what the consumer needs, what, he, what the person needs. And that's the reason why we always speak a little, we always talk to the consumer before we start fixing the drink. What it gives us is a fair idea in terms of who that person is and what is he looking forward to. And then it becomes easier for us to give him an experience over the bar. So the whole idea of cocktail bartending or making a cocktail or being a mixologist is not just about fixing a great drink. The challenge is how to make a beer taste better in my bar. And that can only happen if I can understand the consumer through his nerve. You know, uh, in some of our instances when we bartend, the reason why I say mindful bartending is very important is because uh, as we bartend, we come across a lot of issues. And the reason why a cocktail could be tastier in my bar is purely when I understand and share my shoulder to a guy who is about to cry or has a lot of sorrows and miseries. And at the same time, when I become a part of his celebration. You know, the whole art of bartending or the whole process of cocktail making starts with knowing the consumer. And uh, one of the interesting things that has ever happened in my bar, I'll just tell you a story, is uh, we used to have a long staying guest. He was an Irishman. And he would always come to the bar and order six gin and tonics. And when it came to paying for the drink, he would always not pay for the last drink. The person is six drinks drowned, and I'm there telling him he had six drinks, and it'd always be difficult to convince a man who is six drinks down. What do you do? And it was a regular case with the gentleman. How do you deal with it? He only wants to pay for five, not six. So I came up with an idea. I spoke to my general manager and I said, he's a long staying guest, he gives a lot of business to us, but at the same time, uh, he doesn't want to pay for his last drink. So in order to teach him a lesson, we adopted various styles. 
One of the thing was we never moved his glass. So first drink, second drink, third drink, fourth drink, fifth drink, he started complaining bad service. So he couldn't adopt that style. The third was we had to give him, sorry, we had to retain his stirrer. Even that would not work. So what I did one fine day is he came down, had six drinks, didn't want to pay for his sixth one. I gave him the check. He didn't want to pay for his sixth drink, only five drinks. I went across, fixed him another gin and tonic, went back to him and said, that's your sixth drink. You need to pay for six drinks now. The message is a little bit of intelligence as well. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I spoke a lot about techniques. I spoke a lot about bartending. Uh, I spoke a something about uh, cocktails. Last and the least, and the most important is, we are in a situation where our country is just about evolving when it comes to food and beverage. And there is a lot of misconception about alcohol and the way you look at bartenders. Uh, before I leave, my only message to you is, please love your bartender. Please be good to him. Because we behind the bars are somebody who can keep secrets. Only we know that somebody came to my bar yesterday with his wife, and today he's come with his girlfriend. <laughs> and, uh, and everything that happens, happens within a short span of time. If you come to a bar and order a cocktail and ask me to create a drink, I have to bring in everything together within the span of five minutes because nobody in the world likes to wait for a drink. So whether the creativity, the intelligence, everything comes within five minutes. So we make a lot of mistakes behind the bars. But we never tell the consumer. You know the reason why? The reason why we never tell a person that we make mistakes behind the bar is because every time we make a mistake, a new cocktail is born. Uh, so thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It was wonderful being here. Thank you very much. Cheers.